Welcome back. I suppose at some point we'll figure out whether or not to do a release 12 of multivariant stockfish. Uh, but in the interim, I am noticing that the official stockfish project uh, development is still ongoing. So I should start integrating their changes before, before I fall too far behind. Uh, Chuck Norris's hand is the only hand that can beat a royal flush. Well said. So, yeah, um, ironically, um, I mean, this might be my last, uh, commit that has the version 12 number on, uh, in the commit history, because the next time I merge from upstream, it's going to put the, the version number back to a development version. Ironically, this is a regression with uh, respect to horde chess, um, but you know, I can at least run my benchmark build, and if I've lost some elo, so be it. That there's only so much I can do about that. Maybe uh, Stockfish 13 will be better than 12 at horde. Oh yeah, um, yeah, it's actually exciting. I noticed that uh, in OBS, I forget how I did this. I found a tutorial for it but it's possible, I believe, to specify um, captions. You can enable captions within OBS. I think as of several months ago, uh, OBS, or Twitch has supported rendering captions from OBS as long as they're specified in the correct format. Um, or it doesn't have to be OBS, it could be any program, really. So. Yeah, closed captioning is now possible on Twitch, and also with OBS. And it works best when I speak clearly, which is not all the time. But, um, yeah, it's definitely a cool thing. I wish everyone were doing this, even if it doesn't work the best all the time. It'll give deaf people some opportunity to be able to watch and listen when previously they had no opportunity. They could just watch. Um, and I've seen some live streams where uh, they all they've done is just watch and they've not been able to participate. So yeah, here's my bot playing the game. You can see other bots challenge it. Um, let me mute this for now. Where's the mute? Oh, there's the mute button. All right. Um, See, I'm going to um, accept changes from uh, upstream. And let's see, now I get to resolve merge conflicts. Thankfully, there are not many. Uh, so I have a chess engine that plays other chess variants, like a Crazy House, where you capture pieces and can put them back on the board. Um, so... Um, this is done by yeah, adding all sorts of preprocessor directives for my special code and compilation flags that are run in my compile script to add and remove all these special kinds of chess. Um, oh, this looks tricky to merge. Is there anything? Okay, just these two in this file. All right. Um... So above the equal sign is my change, and below the equal sign is the upstream change. Let's see, so if I just, what if I accept both changes? What's that gonna look like? So if neural network uh, compilation is supported, yeah, let's just accept both my changes and the upstream change, wait. Oh, I'm sorry, they removed this line instead of if, let's see. So they removed this line and added if use classical and neural networks, um, hang on, how do I read this? Use classical is equal to some condition is met based on the evaluation 
divergence. And then classical is um, either neural network is disabled or you do not use NNUE or explicitly use classical because of this divergence or randomly based on this 0xb um, uh, not randomly but just occasionally do not use values from the neural network. Okay and then they rewrote this but I still want my preprocessor directive here that if I'm not compiling with this use NNUE flag just do not include any of the neural network stuff. Don't even consider it. Um, yeah, I think this is still functionally equivalent. Okay, right and next file. Next conflict is here. Um, oh, this is the only conflict. So previously there was this line about um, assigning, hmm, I'm confused. Previously there was this computed score flag that is no longer needed. Um, is this the simplest way to write all of this code now? Probably not. Um, yeah, that's simpler. It's ugly, but it is simple. All right, git add, evaluate, and position, git commit. So we're going to merge upstream changes. I forget how many commits behind I was at the time of the merge. To validate that I did the merge correctly, we're going to run one, two, three, four tests in a row with debug mode enabled. Um, and if all these tests pass, then the merge is probably fine. Um, let's see. Make clean build. All right, let's take a look at how many kits, commits behind I was before I started. Uh, do, 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 10 commits behind. So I'm accepting the 10 most recent changes from the official Stockfish project, which are double probability of using a classical evaluation after performing a benchmark test, uh, re-enable the neural network, um, so fix null move, fix the null move implementation, which is setting of some semaphore it doesn't need to be setting and it's overly complicated. Uh, use the classical evaluation more often. Um, so like for the version 12 frozen release, um, there was a heavy emphasis on your using neural networks. That's not always the best thing to do although neural networks did cause a large ELO gain. Adjust penalty and refuted early quiet moves, so this is just some parameter tweak. Um, update the default neural network to a newer version that was built from scratch, that's cool. Late move reduction simplification, and another late move reduction simplification. Oh, so some search stuff got a lot simpler, that's cool. Less pruning in quiescent search. That's kind of cool too. Restore development version. So this takes away the big one, two that we've all been so excited about and puts us on the development path for version 13. Uh, do I get money for this work? I do not. Um, no, this is uncompensated volunteer work. Uh, that. Uh, just mostly done out of excitement about chess variants. Um, and Lee Chess is so kind as to host my engine and have people play against it. Um, yeah, no, this is just me doing things for fun. 
Also, it's good that I get access to the Lee Chess development team who get to give me like advice about how best to develop and test and design things. So that's kind of exciting too. Yeah, uh, it's kind of crazy the level of effort I've put into this. Um, but also it's pretty awesome that they'll volunteer to just host my stuff and deploy it for me. Um, yeah, so like here we have current games like there's old uh, these are just people playing, but people also enjoy playing against uh, my engine. Although most of these people aren't even playing variants, they're just playing standard chess. But Lee Chess hosts all this computing power, uh, which is also used for game analysis, which is pretty cool. Yeah, but you know, it's certainly true I've put in a crazy amount of effort trying to support this volunteer thing. Uh, but it's been a good collaboration in times when I've gotten most stuck. I really get to break out the development tools and see how to um, do some really complicated stuff, which occasionally helps me build up some practical experience for what I actually do for a uh, living. So. Troubleshooting software is hard, um, but it's good. Like, doing it for this volunteer project thing is way more entertaining than having to deal with this sort of stuff in a work environment. Um, also, it's pretty cool that, like, top grandmasters, at least one in particular, has played so many games against my bot. This is just amazing. I'm surprised. Um... Uh, we've all heard of, well, at least in the chess community, we've all heard of Yasser. Uh, he's played an insane number of games. Uh, Four-time U.S. champion and grandmaster. And he loves playing and teaching Crazy House and stuff like that. Um, so he's played an insane number of games against my bot. Um, let's see, opponent... Computer, search, I uh, hope I'm not undercutting my own point, but yeah, so he's playing against like, my. there's eight levels of my bot, um, the top ones are extremely hard to play against, um, uh, so yeah, it's, I assume just for fun, like here he is six hours ago playing a game against level six. Okay, um, yeah, it looks like he got it. Uh, but it's just amazing seeing people enjoying this so much. Chess variants are great. Um, But yeah, in working on these projects, I get to collaborate with the Lee Chess team who get to educate me about stuff like how to do uh, automated builds. You can do builds, um, let's see. So we're building using GitHub and Atveyor and Travis, uh, none of which I had any clue about before joining this team. So that was kind of interesting to get going. Um, So, yeah, it's just great being a part of this team that runs such an awesome site. I do complain about a lot of things on the site, but, um, yeah, no, it's just a wonderful environment. Um, all right. Take care, Destiny. So, let's see, um, huh. I was watching my bot earlier, nobody's playing it right now, could always put up, um, oh, here's the bot category, I guess there's no bot games in progress right now either. Um, yeah, some of my tests are still running. 
Let's see, did we get notified about anything? Oh! <laughs> nice. Fashionably latte. Um, wait, what? I'm confused. Read me dash. A multi-purpose accessibility app. Oh yeah, this is a cool idea. When was this previously last updated? Some number of months ago. And then I asked them, like, hey, you gonna put a license that other people could use this thing? Like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm glad to see they were so receptive to the idea. I don't know, like, I haven't even closely looked at this, but it's just awesome seeing open source accessibility tools. Um... It also, this sounds pretty cool. I don't know like how ambitious this project is and how far they've gotten, but um, it's compatible with Android 10, Android Pi, and some past versions as well. Uh, so that's cool. It's not live in the Play Store. Feel free to download the app files, but note you'll need your own Google Services JSON for the API. Future implementation, dyslexic font for East Asian languages, freeze the live camera feed for OCR. Um, hmm. Oh. Oh, interesting. All right. All right, I've not starred this yet. I just put the issue out there. Now we're going to star and watch it to express our interest, although I don't expect this to go anywhere too quickly. Um, it's excellent that it has been done. And what gained my attention here first was I was looking at, somebody had pointed out Fashionably Lata had done some other project. Can I get to this, how do I get to this person's name? All right, Let's see, where do I, okay, and then I can go over here to get to their profile. Yeah, somebody had pointed me that they did a Scala library for integrating with LeechS, and that had me curious, like, what other things did this developer do? And that pointed me to the README accessibility library. So, um, that's pretty cool. All right, status shows, wait, hang on, before I go too far, instrumented testing okay. All right, so now we see, if we look at my log, we've done the merge. What? Oh, okay, this is sorted by commit date. So like, yeah, my most recent commit shows above like the 10 other commits I just merged. All right, that's cool. Um, oh, right, so I know what to do now git push. All right, there we go. We have started on version 13 development. Um, but also, let's deploy this latest and greatest stuff um, over to my cloud instance that hosts my bot. And each time I do this, I have to check, is my bot playing a game at the moment? I don't have some super sophisticated auto deploy set up. Um, so I'm going to have to carefully restart, uh, reset this between games. So this consists of two steps one, to deploy the new files, and two, um, to actually start the new engine. Only bots could play a game in this manner. Humans would freak out long before that position. Alright, 
we've deployed the file. I'm sorry, we're deploying the neural network. And next we're going to deploy... Boop -a -doo. Wow, the neural network files are big. Okay, we deploy the stockfish binary. And then very carefully between games, we issue the restart command, um, which is probably honestly going to time out. But yeah, just don't do that during the middle of a game or the bot's going to flag, which would not be ideal. 13. 12. 11. I'm actually impressed, like, how many moves the bots are allowed to play so quickly due to the site's lag compensation. That's a, a lot of compensation right there. Okay, there's my restart command. It's been restarted. All right. Um. Oh, nice. Nice. So now you can actually see Stockfish 2020-0908. That's the build date. There you go. So this is going to be the first release of um, the development of Stockfish 13. So uh, it's going to be another six months to a year before that releases, but still, uh, it's excited to exciting to get on the path to 13. Um, also means that my engine has a leg up on all the other engines until they update their source code. So uh, especially with the new neural network in place, I'm kind of curious how it's going to play. But yeah, this is going to be another, uh, I don't know, uh, I, there's only so much vamping I can do while watching a 10 minute game. So feel free to go to the website uh, leechess.org and go observe the games yourself. I had expected this code merging um, of changes from upstream to be far more painful than it ended up being. Um, it wasn't that painful at all. Now I've kind of ignored a little bit here. I'm assuming that just because all my t local tests were successful that um, the continuous integration pipeline tests will also succeed. But we see we have yet to see uh, GitHub as well as Travis successfully pass these tests. So uh, this might take an hour, but I trust that I merged it correctly. All my local tests did succeed. So. Hooray. Yeah, I uh, expect to do a lot more coding on stream, but that didn't happen because things went so smoothly. So I think we'll cut it there. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time.